What's up, YouTube? Siegfried Lane. The other day I made a video talking about how all of these builds being put on YouTube for Don Hang IL are actually quite inferior and in how you're much better off running a double support, especially Yukong and Bronya. Now, I figured the best way to do that would be able to showcase ease of use as well as how much damage it does. I'm going to be showcasing it on two bosses, which is going to be the last boss that was brought out, uh, Fintilia, and the first boss being Kokolia. The reason being is I want to show the AoE damage differences as well as the damage differences for the um, single target. So I'll see you guys in just a minute. So we're going to be starting off with my team here. This is my team. Now, something to put in mind is that we're going to be comparing this not only numbers, but also ease of access of doing the attacks. Now, mine is at E6, which is going to make a difference for ease of access. If you're at E2, it's going to be much easier to do this. But we will try to keep it at what it would be like at E1. We're going to use my team first. So we're going to compare the numbers and how easy it is. We're only going to the second boss because of the fact that if you retreat, you can keep your energy, and it's going to make the video much easier to go for. And we're just going to see how fast we can kill the second form of this boss. So, I'm going to play this like I would normally play it, except I'm going to make sure that I do not use Don Hanks' ultimate to bring his normal attack up. So here we go. So as you see, we're going through, we're just going to do this attack real quick. Again, a difference at E4 is you do have to worry about getting those triples off. It will mean something. A big thing to remember is that it actually isn't going to make that much of a difference because both are going to be dealing with E6 running Don Hangs. So it actually really won't matter. I can use his ultimate anyways because he's going to be Don Hang both ways. He'll go off here. So now we're going to start the buffing process. This is the process where we start the buffing. Where we see just how much damage that they do, that we can do this to. Again, we're not doing the third boss, mostly because if we do the third boss, our energy is completely gone and we have to restart from scratch. And I would rather prefer not worrying about building it. So real quick, before we do this, I kind of want to show why this does so much damage. I did put out an open guide, but if you look, you can see our crit damage is over 400%. You can see our uh, crit, you know, crit rate is over 100, so we're going to crit for sure. And of course, we have a bunch of damage bonuses here that we're just getting from Brony and from Yukon. Right here we have 73 crit damage here. We have the 75% attack here. We're over 6,000 attack right now. So let's see if we can finish this boss off right here and how much we do. So, as you saw there, we had 750,000. So we're gonna come back with the team that YouTube is showcasing, or at least a team that would be more powerful than what they're showcasing. So, to get my point across, we're actually going to be using a premium team which is technically better than the one the YouTubers are suggesting. Now, to be clear, this one is free to play friendly because if you didn't know, Yukong was a free unit. So she is a very free to play friendly unit. Bronya, you could have easily, if you were doing your summons on your normal bat, you should hit that 300 by now. If, you, if not, you're close and you can pick up Bronya. So both of these units are technically a pretty easy free to play unit to get. The only one here would probably be this guy. Or oh, sorry, not. Not Silverwolf, I'm sorry. These two units are very easy for you to be friendly, especially if you're summoning on his banner. You most likely pulled at least a copy of, a copy of her, right? But we're going to be using a premium debuffer to show the damage differences. Now this is going to be the ideal damage for both, being as 
the boss is already no in person. imaginary, so we're already getting the full buffs from it being imaginary. So we're gonna go ahead and go in here. We're gonna start off with getting off that little extra buff knee nerf there. We're gonna go use his attack. We're gonna go ahead and do our triple, you know, just like before. Pretty much the same thing as before. We're just gonna keep going through here. So he's going to bring it back up again. Do a triple. I'm going to go and just let this kill normally because I don't want to deal with, uh... I don't really want to deal with, um, having to worry about building that up. So let's get to just do it this way. So now that we're in this stage, we're going to go ahead. As you can see here, oh, Donnie will attack first. Very nice. Donnie is going to get his attack off first. Now, because we're running a different build, we're of course going to go Bronya first, then we're going to run Lucha, then Civil Lucha. And that's where we're going to keep it. We're actually not going to run Don Hanks Ultimate, just because we want to see how much damage his actual enhanced basic attack does. Now, something to keep in mind is that we're going to check more the debuffs on the enemy, thanks to Civil Warp after this, to see how much she debuffed the enemy. So let's take a look at the enemy real quick. So she has the increased damage taken and the defense shred. Now, if we had another attack with her, we probably could have gotten another defense down by like 9%. But these are the two big ones right here. Um, she did lose, she doesn't have the full resistance down, but we can go okay, ahead we can fix that quite easily. And we're gonna fix that real fast. Because I do want to have her more buffed up. There we go. And we're gonna go ahead and bring in Don Hang, fully buffed up. So Dong Hang's actually running a bit more buffs. Let's go take a look here. And you can see now she's got the six different buffs. She's got, she's completely debuffed. Now we're gonna see just how much damage we do. I just realized something. Well, I don't know. 690k. So, that would look at 690. So we can already see a difference between the AoE fights. Let's go ahead and take a look at a single target fight next. Next. So I think the best boss to test out single target would be Kokolia. So we're going to do it on Kokolia. Now again, the big thing is we are not running to get the perfect amount of damage. We're not running perfect. We're running our normal run, what it looks like. So we are going to be using her ability. But if it doesn't end up on imaginary, it doesn't end up on imaginary. That's just how it's going to be. We are not going to try and spam it a bunch of times to try and get our magnetic damage up. It's just going to be what it is. The reason being that that's more realistic of what we would see happen. So we're not going to try like, you know, perfectly run this in a perfect mode. It's going to be pretty much ran how it should run and we're going to see what happens there. So here we're going to be doing a dragon attack. We're going to be doing a triple. And we are going to go and start working on building up our uh, different... We're going to start building up our skill points again. because do, I do want to have at least our skill points ready to go when the time hits. Perfect. Okay. So now at the perfect run here, we got the full set of skill points we're going to need. We are going to have to wait for Bronya, of course. Hopefully, okay, we're not waiting for Bronya because that just kind of screwed us. Actually, we can, actually, we can get Bronya. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring Bronya in first. See, so luckily we can do this. We're going to pop that. Okay, so this is the best ideal situation here. Again, we're not going to go crazy and hope that everything runs perfect because that's not how it runs, but we are going to see just how much damage this does on a single target. This really is one of the best to come options if you're running this way. You are going to need to use uh, Roni's ability on more than just Silver uh, Don Hank. So we're pretty much using it on Silver Wolf instead of Don Hank, which does remove Don Hank's extra 90% damage boost. But as you can see here, he still is running this right here. And we gotta take a look here at the enemy. You can see she's got all six debuffs on, so we're gonna see how this goes. Now this is again, best slot really, without having to try and farm one. 270, we're gonna say 280,000. Yeah, we're gonna say 280,000, what we got there. 
So, let's take a look at what my team looks like. So, we're going to go ahead and jump in with my team now. Now, again, the playstyle is going to change a bit. What you're waiting for is going to change a bit. So, I do find this one easier to play for rather than having to wait for multiple characters. In this case, you know, I'd only have to either wait for, Bro uh, for Bronya, really, or Don Hing, depending on the situation. So, this actually works really well. So, again, and because of the way I'm playing this way, it's, I'm going to always use these buffs first, as my teams have changed. That real quick. We'll do a triple here. I do want to wait until we see her ass come down to decide whether or not to do anything else. Perfect. Very nice. Should summon out her ads now. Can't really get my buffs up, get rid of his up. But we're going to do that. So again, I mean, like, I could run his ultimate faster, but I really don't want to, because I have to be at E6, I do have to make sure that I'm always getting that triple off, and I'm going to need to make sure that I have at least three stacks to keep that triple crit rate up, up, as that has the majority of his damage in this set. But as you can see here, we are now ready to go. She's going to have three attacks to go first, we're going to get those three attacks off, and then we're going to pop Donnie's buff afterwards. So she's imprisoned him. Now, we're going to go ahead and just bring him right on here. Now, the good news here is that while well, he's got this buff up from her, we can use his ultimate and it won't change anything. That will not remove our buff. At least it should not. So we take a look here. As you see, we still have that buff. So now we're going to go into the full team rotation here. Remember, the last one was about 280-290,000. Let's see just what Dawn Hane can do here. So of course, we get Teen Young's first for the double dip. We're gonna pop Bronius for the massive crit, more crit damage, and then we're gonna pop, of course, this. And now we're gonna do a triple. Look at that, four hundred and seventy thousand. Four hundred and seventy thousand. So now that you've seen the damage differences, I'm sure a lot of people might comment, oh, well, my Dawn Hang is at E6, R5, that's why I'm seeing these damage numbers, and it's not as good if you're not at E5. Um, the thing to remember is that both of those these setups use the same Dawn Hang. Dawn Hang was E6, R5 at both. However, we still saw a drastic change in damage. And it would just take a slight rotation change between E0 and E2, which would be to pretty much just wait for Bronya and then use Bronya. And so you build Bronya more for speed. If you're running any zero, you're probably going to want Bronya to be in a faster speed build for this so she can get her buffs off faster and get your character up quicker. Um, the other thing is if Bronya brings him in and it's, you know, then it's his turn, then he ultimates, he won't actually lose his buff after the ultimate, her buff after the ultimate. So she could bring him in, then he could ultimate to give himself the two stacks, then you use all of the ultimates, and then his ability is still going to do a lot of damage. So... You know, I've, I've been watching the YouTubers, and it's always the same thing. This the same builds just spitting out of the debuffer, the buffer, and the healer, and it's always Palin. How it's their favorite team, but realistically, it's just the same information being regurgitated. I really feel this is kind of what happened with Bennett, right? When everyone talks about how great Bennett is, if you've actually ever tried to really use Bennett, he sucks so bad. I will never understand people talking about how good he is. His ultimate is the only thing that buffs, and it's not up on time, man. And Tillian requires the same thing. She requires her ultimate to be up. And if you built your characters, they're not going to need that. As you saw here, due to the fact that Don Hang, once he ultimates and then uses his attack, he should pretty much nuke everything. There is no reason to need to build energy. You more need to get those skill points up. As realistically, his ultimate, and this is something people need to remember, Don Hang's ultimate does not increase his basic attack damage. It makes it easier to get it out. But if you have the skill points ready to go, then you don't even need the ultimate. The ultimate there is just to make it easier if you need it. So realistically, getting more ultimate just so you can use that attack more often doesn't make more sense when you can just build that attack to just completely dominate in one round. So 
<clears throat> those are the different numbers. I mean, as you saw, single target, my team almost doubled a team that would be based off what YouTube is running. And again, YouTube, the team YouTube is suggesting is even worse because it's all four stars minus Lucha and Don Hang. This is, you know, running a five star, which you should have or could get relatively soon if you didn't, if you haven't hit the 300 mark yet. If you didn't get her at the 300, I don't know what you were thinking. Everybody was saying to get her. Um, a free unit we got with the release of Silver Wolf. And then, of course, a healer. I use Lucha because I have him, but if you don't have him, you can use any healer you want. Don Hang's ultimate is still going to help take care of that problem with the skill point. So, this at least is what I mean. I wanted to kind of connect this to my video about YouTubers creating the wrong builds and kind of saying, you know, kind of, you know, promoting the wrong. I, I think a lot of misinformation for Don Hang on how to get max damage out of him. Again, it's better for him to be able to just destroy everything in one turn instead of be able to get two ultimates in a battle. The faster you can destroy something, the better. And since everything in this game is about speed, you know, from memory into the Forgotten Hall, some parts in the simulated universe, the faster you kill something, the more time you're saving on not having to heal. Anyways, that's where I'm going to end this video. If this helped you guys, let me know. Uh, leave in the comments what do you guys think of the builds that YouTubers are, are regurgitating with the whole Pela, Ting Young, and Don Hang builds. Is, do you find that build actually good? Have you tried this build? Do you find this build better? One thing I will tell you that I've learned from watching a lot of Genshin players is half the time they make a build that sucks and they realize it, it sucked after they've made it and have promoted it. So hopefully let me know if this build actually works for you guys. Um, tell me what you guys think in the end. Secret Chilean, signing out. I'll catch you guys in the next video. I did make an ultimate guide, by the way, explaining how to get this nut, this, how to play this build. Check that video out if you're curious.